What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Eat, Speak, Compete, the podcast where we talk about everything going on in the esports and gaming space on a week-to-week basis. My name is Yeso, your host as always, and my co-host joining me once again is Luke Shamonahe Brew back in the studio here on October 4th for our eighth episode. Welcome back, Luke. How are we doing? Good. Good. We're back. Eighth episode. Um... Pretty crazy day, week. You know, we yes. uh, we're, we're here at Esports Arena gearing up for a lot, so it's been a little wild on our end. But you know, always always excited to take a couple moments out of the day and talk some news and kind of catch up just on what's been going on in the scene. So good to be here. Definitely, we'll tease. We're gonna have a cool little announcement for next week's episode in mm-hmm. regards to like Esports Arena specific stuff. So uh, we have some cool stuff uh, in the pipeline. So if you do want to hear about that, definitely make sure to tune in to next week's episode because we'll get to talk uh, a little bit about that. But let's talk about kind of the week that was here. Obviously, episode eight, we're recording on October 4th, and we'll start in the smash scene. Uh, We've been talking about it, honestly, a lot since we started the podcast. It's Mm -hmm. been, you know, kind of hot and heavy in the smash scene here for the last few months. And MKLeo gets a big win. Uh, He wins Low Tide City Smash Ultimate this weekend. Uh, He ends up coming back from the loser's bracket again, which is looking kind of like a common occurrence for him over the last couple months um but he came came back and played a essentially perfect grand finals go 6-0 uh to take the win at low tide city it was pretty crazy yeah man watching these smash tournaments is so funny dude like he's so mean <laughs> like to just do this to these people again like the st- the statistics are so funny right because for the longest time it's always been this stat that MK Leo is more likely to reverse sweep you, right? And uh, if, you're, if you're up 2-0, it's more, still more likely that you lose the set than you win the set, mm-hmm. right? Like, that's a pretty crazy stat to hold. And now I feel like someone's got to do the math on, like, if he loses round one, he's still, like, statistically more likely to win the whole tournament than you are to make it to round two. Like, it's just, it's just so crazy how good he is and how much he can adapt. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, he, his main character obviously being Byleth, uh, he did use um, Joker. Mm-hmm. That's how he won Grand. To annihilate the buzz. Yeah. Uh, I just don't think Violet does really good against like cheeky like zoner characters, mm-hmm. uh, which the buzz plays a lot of. But overall, the <laughs> buzz was like so hyped and like didn't drop a set like the whole time, and then just get annihilated in Grands like that. Uh, he took it pretty hard, which makes sense um, because it's honestly brutal. Like MK is so just so good, and yeah. it's just it's so cool seeing him just continue to dominate um, regardless of all these people like really trying so and i mean let's just talk about leo's year here because his name every time we've talked smash so far his name has come up and that's for good reason he has competed in nine events so far in 2021 he has not finished below second place in any of those nine events and he's won five of them so five first place finishes four second place finishes he's in every grand final period in 2021 he is no doubt the best smash ultimate player in the world and we are just seeing you know uh, whenever you talk about uh melee right you talk about like the five gods and now it's just leo in <laughs> ultimate which is crazy yeah you know it's it's definitely interesting there's you know i was watching the smash tournament last night um with my girlfriend and she was like uh because mars was up mm-hmm. and uh, she was like oh who do you think's gonna win this match i was like oh mars like, oh really mars i'm like yeah well technically he is like the third and the best in the world but when like your top two are like so far ahead mm-hmm. it's like yeah mars is third but it's like what does that even really mean you know what i mean because like you know sure mk leo is clearly number one yes and tweak who's really the only person to like competitively take down mk leo right mm-hmm. anytime no one else has beaten mk leo like 6-0 mm-hmm. like you might take a set off mk leo but like like you see at the buzz you ain't taking set two and three off mk leo sure. i'll tell you that much other than tweak right so tweak i think has a very solid second place there because mm-hmm. he really is the only one who can consistently actually put mk leo down um so it's it's pretty interesting to just see that the fact that the, 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 that gap is so big in a game like this. So I totally agree. Like the five gods of of, of melee now really kind of toned down to one. I gotta give it to Tweak though. So maybe two gods of mm-hmm. ultimate. But uh, we'll have to see how the the scene continues to develop because there's there's definitely some powerhouses that I think um, depending on how much they start going to local lands could do some damage. I think Void is one of those mm-hmm. who I think is just like um, mechanically one of the best in ultimate. So because of that, the more he goes and competes, yeah. because of his character choice, like there's such a lack of experience there that he very well could find himself in the top five easy. 
Same thing with um, Esam. Esam's mm -hmm. the same way. Another character that doesn't have a lot of, people don't get a lot of matchup experience on and is absolutely insane with the character and great mechanically. Yeah. Uh, so stuff like that, I think that there's a lot of potential for them, but you know, it's, it's hard when you're, uh, when you're top character, when, when their top player is a sword character user, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I think, <laughs> and, I, and I think the way it works out as well, there may be some people that look at it and maybe they're bummed if they aren't a Leo fan to see that he's really just the guy right now with Tweet kind of in second. Uh, after the top two, I think it's a, a very interesting conversation. We looked at all of these different events. Yeah, there's like so many different big names that I think could lay claim to those kind of fourth, fifth, sixth place spots in Ultimate right now. I think there's a lot of different people you can make arguments for. And I think even if Leo just has a monopoly on number one, I think the conversation is so interesting behind him. I agree. That I think Ultimate is still incredibly compelling for so many different reasons. So Yeah, I think I saw, um, I think it was like two tournaments ago, but I was watching a multi-stream where it mm -hmm. had like all four of the streams pulled up because they like had a bunch of different streamers running like the side streams. Mm -hmm. And there was like four different Ultimate games going on and there was eight different characters on the screen. Which is awesome. And I was awesome, like, man. that's crazy. Like, you know, so it's super cool to see like just it's going to develop a lot over the next couple of months and the rest of the lands and stuff like that. So I'm excited to kind of see, um, I guess, once things start getting back to, you know, as we're seeing now, a lot of regular events. I'm mm -hmm. sorry. I'm, I'm excited to see who pulls out on top. Yeah. I think it's going to be really interesting. We're definitely going to continue to talk about a lot of Smash. Uh, mm -hmm. I love it, too. You know, I'm not the biggest Smash guy, but I love watching the scene. I think it's incredibly fascinating, and there's a lot of really, uh, you know, really hype matches, a lot yeah. of great storylines, a lot of great players, so I think it's really cool. Super fun uh, scene, to, for sure. Yeah, to get to visit that scene. But uh, let's switch gears to uh, a little bit of Valorant, but a little different from what we have talked about so far. We've had a heavy focus uh, on VCT Masters and the Cumping Cumping. Uh, coming champions event in uh, Berlin yep. in November. But let's talk uh, VCT Game Changers, which mm. uh, was announced back in February. And if you actually haven't heard anything about what VCT uh, Game Changers is, it's really a, uh, a Valorant competitive scene uh, to give opportunities for women and other uh, marginalized genders to showcase their talent and compete. I think it's uh, really awesome. Obviously, you know, us here at Esports Arena are so heavily involved with so many different titles that I think it's natural for us to be like yeah like women competing people that are non-binary like that's a normal pe thing for us i remember the, the you know the crazy amount of time uh, i spent at you know wnf nights at in santa Ana, multi like tons of different trans people that come and compete so like that's a normal thing for me but it's still uh interesting to see other scenes like adjusting and trying to open up these opportunities to other people so i think uh vct game changers is great and they had their second main event uh just finish up over this weekend and c9 white which is their women's team has now won both main events they didn't drop a single map until grand finals and they end up winning grand finals three to one over shopify rebellion yeah i mean i'm all about it i i actually i feel like i remember it being announced and when it was announced, um, I did a decent amount of research into the C9 white team, and Mel, I mm -hmm. believe, is their main captain. Mm -hmm. um, and, and she seems super awesome. Um, and so obviously the whole gang does. But uh, I didn't get a chance to really take a look at it too much. I hope that mm -hmm. you know it went well and they had plenty of you know competition and teams and whatnot. But um, <clears throat> sounds like a really cool idea. I'm all, I'm, I'm all about the energy. I think that a lot of game developers um, and organizers have tried a lot of different um, things in the past when it comes to creating more of a pro scene let's mm -hmm. say like a, a semi to pro scene for um you know the the minority groups if you will um and some have gone i'd say okay like mm -hmm. csgo i think right like it's probably the uh leader if you look at history sure. of that type of you know that type of uh, events with you know uh, clg red yeah. and that whole you know all of their different um csgo female events that they had had uh, rolled out in the past um, I know Dignitas had a team out there as well mm -hmm. that back then. Um, but when it comes to, as of recently, it's kind of been like hit or miss, right? Like some have kind of been more of a, like targeted or, a, you know, canceled because of, you know, the direction they went with it. And others have kind of, you know, succeeded in starting to kind of actually like grow that. And it seems like Riot is one of those who is successfully starting to kind of grow that scene. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm pretty excited. You know, I, I think that... Um, I don't really know exactly what the what the right move is going to be in the long term if it's split if it's together if it's whatever it might be right because it's like kind of like who knows it depends on how the next generation grows into it mm -hmm. um but it's smart to start having those programs now and identifying the, that talent and really show i mean the biggest thing is just to show that the talent can exist 
on either side. Yeah. Right. So the, the ability to host these type of events and excite the younger generation that it doesn't matter, mm -hmm. right? That you can still be a badass regardless. Yeah. Um, I think that's super cool, and I'm, I'm glad to see that um, it's becoming, I guess, more standardized because I don't think I've seen a lot of that recently. So. Yeah, and I mean, I think you know they're just giving opportunities. I think the the heavy focus for game changers is that it hasn't necessarily been about, you know, we want this to be the craziest, highest level uh, gameplay. It will, you know, we want it to be exactly the same thing as the main VCT or anything like that. I think it's been just heavily focused on. We want to give opportunities. We want to uh, expose women and, and these other genders and people uh, who are in these kind of marginalized communities uh, to the opportunities to learn about these scenes and try it out, see if they, it's what they want to do, showcase their talent. And I think uh, so far from what I've seen, there's been uh, I've seen a lot of great things on social, a lot of people that are watching it, participating, uh, casters. I know I'm buddies with, with Tanner Metro, who has been working with Game Changers, and I've seen tons and tons of positive feedback about what's going on so i think uh so far they're doing a great job and it's awesome to see you know how well things went off with uh, the the latest main event this weekend and i'm excited for more so i think it's the only good thing so far cool yeah i'm all about it i'll have to watch the next one when, when is it you said uh i don't know about the next okay. one but i know that was their their second main event but it's definitely something i'm gonna be uh keeping an eye on uh Let's talk. We talked about a ton of big lands uh, over the last couple of episodes that we were uh, uh, that we did, but one coming up that's going to have some changes is the international. Uh, Valve has canceled the in-person audience for the international. Uh, from uh, a Dot Esports article, said this comes just one day after all ten members of Team Aster, along with multiple players from Invictus Gaming, tested positive for COVID-19 and adopted self-quarantining measures at their hotels in Bucharest, Romania. So that's uh, unfortunate, but it kind of goes back to a point that we've hit many, many times over our eight episodes, and it's that developers and tournament organizers being willing to take the steps necessary to protect the staff, protect the players, protect the teams, uh, and make sure that everybody's safe so that, you know, because that is really the most important part of having these events go well. Uh, and it just looks like Valve is doing the right thing here. It's unfortunate, um, but people are going to get refunds for their tickets, and hopefully the international still goes off and goes well. Yeah, that's pretty rough. It's obviously a big bummer, you know, because people are so excited for these big events. So mm -hmm. I think that's going to probably happen a lot, yeah. you know, but... Again, at least it can happen. At least the players can stay safe, and mm -hmm. at least that they'll be able to, you know, game without having to worry. Yeah. And that's I, what's important. I agree. I agree. I think it's really important, and uh, it'll be interesting to see, you know, the the big major in Stockholm yep. for CS is coming up as well. And are we going to be having a similar conversation about that very soon? Who knows? I hope not. Uh, I, You know, I hope things go well. I hope nobody's catching COVID and that they're able to – have it go off uh, without a hitch and have people and spectators in for playoffs. But uh, regardless, I think uh, Valve has already shown with the international that they're willing to make changes to uh, protect people. So I think it wouldn't surprise me if they made the same decision uh, for that event. So we'll have to see. Yeah, even ahead of time, maybe. There. Maybe they're just like, mm -hmm. cut it now. <laughs> and I mean, it, and that may be the right decision, yeah. right? Uh, you know, you I, I can't imagine the situation is that drastically different. Uh, for Stockholm and it's you know Valve as well, so I think it wouldn't surprise me. But we'll uh, we'll wait to see on that. Uh, let's talk about a classic North American League pro, who I think his jersey, his closet is just full of jerseys of all different kinds of teams. Let's talk about Dardock. Mm. Uh, reports are saying that he is looking to make a return to pro play in 2022 but is aiming to compete in the LEC or in the European regional leagues. Uh, what are your thoughts on seeing this? This is a, you know, for anybody like ancillarily aware of like the NA league scene, you know who Dardock is and you kind of know what his story is. And he's looking to make a comeback again. Not in North America, he's not. <laughs> I um, guess not. I yeah. mean, it feels like. We've said so many times was it Dig over the last, last few years. Time? Yes, it was okay. Dig. He got dropped from I think either I right at the end of spring split or very early on in summer that it just wasn't going well. But it feels like the last few years, at the you know when he would get dropped from a team and leave a team, we'd be like, okay, that's the last time, right? Okay, he's burned the last bridge. Yep. 
But then he had a few more after that. So now I'm like, it looks like maybe he has finally burned that last bridge in NA. But I'm not holding my breath that he's going to make it in Europe. I mean, I, I mean, make it is quite the quite the definition. I don't sure. necessarily think he's going to make it anywhere if we're being, you know, if we're, if we're going that route. But you know, I can I can see him fitting into some European teams. Like, you know, it's not like he's not it's not like he's not good. I just you're think talking that, about a, from a cultural perspective. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, maybe it feels like. But you know what I mean, right? When you right, think is, about Europe and European players and the kind of cultures around those teams, if you've ever spent any time listening to like interviews and players talk about kind of how the atmosphere is around those teams, I do agree yeah. that it does seem like a better fit for a Dardoch type personality. And like, you know, if a, a team like rallies behind it mm -hmm. too, like there could be, you know, everybody needs some good villains. I'm, you know, I don't know. I think he was honestly... It's hard to compare NA and U from a talent perspective because it's easy to just look at. I feel like it's not even a talent discussion, though. We know right? no. we know he so, can so, compete. No, I know, but when you compare, when, but when you compare NA as a whole, right, mm. to EU, uh, I think it's easy to just look at what NA has not done internationally versus what EU has done and has been very competitive over the last few years internationally. And then you try to think, you know. I don't know that there's ever been a North American player imported into Europe uh, that I know of off the top of my head. And for Dardoch to be the first one, I mean, look, I think he had, I think he was <laughs> really so good. I think he was really good in spring, honestly. Like, well, he was like a literal a prodigy talent. when he came out. Yes. People thought I, he was going to be like the greatest player ever. Yeah. I mean, they thought he was kind of the heir apparent to yes. like, the North American jungle. Um I would say he has never quite delivered completely on that potential. And I think that is even separate from the kind of attitude and teamwork issues that he has had. I just don't, I think he's been good. I don't know that he's ever truly been great and been that player we expected of him. But I think if he can go to Europe and play at the level that we saw from him in spring, I think he has a shot. I wouldn't be betting on him on an LEC roster outside of, I guess maybe he could sneak onto a bottom two team. I think him getting onto a European Regional League team is very likely. I think that makes a lot of sense. A uh, lot more opportunity there, and the bar is certainly going to be lower. But if I was a betting man, I'd say probably no for the LEC, at least at the start. We'll see if he can prove himself uh, in, in, like, Masters. But uh, I think it's, at the very least, an interesting story because he's looking to continue to fill out that closet with different jerseys. <laughs> I'm all about it. It's uh, <laughs> it's very interesting. It's very. There's only a few teams. I'm trying to think. Right, he played for TSM, CLG, Immortals, Dignitas, Echo Fox. I'm trying to think of like the the other current teams that he's. I don't think he played for EG. I don't know. He's played for, I would say, seven or eight of the current orgs in the LCS, which is an incredible thing to see. So, does it work out? I don't know, but I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye on that story during the. Uh, during the league off season. Uh, let's talk about another LAN. We've discussed Halo Infinite and it's coming release a lot. And we got details for their first HCS event. It's gonna be in Raleigh this coming December. So pretty soon after the release of the game, which is uh, December 8th, it's gonna have a $250,000 starting prize pool with open bracket and pool play, and they sold out VIP tickets for the event in a few minutes. Like they were gone so fast. They're likely to probably sell it all like general admission tickets as well very soon if they haven't already. Um, this is incredible. I mean, I'm super excited about Halo Infinite. I feel like there hasn't been this kind of excitement around Halo for a long time. And it feels like Halo is ready to kind of return to its former glory in a lot of different ways. Yeah, I definitely don't disagree. I think that, you know, talking with the eSports Halo team and whatnot, I think that they're really putting their best foot forward mm -hmm. and really, you know, diving head first. And they plan to put a lot of, you know, support behind Halo Infinite on the eSports side, which I think is extremely important to the um, to the game, you know, just the, the the whole community piece, right? There's so many times, right, we see it, at, we've, we've seen it a hundred million bajillion times, like Call of Duty, right, where there's just, like, no support, and the game's, like, hype, and then as soon as the hype starts to die down, and, you know, not only does the game start to die for the casuals, but then the streamers stop playing it, and then mm -hmm. just a cycle that hits over and over and over and over and over again, um, and I think that, you know, for Halo, a game that hasn't had its 
chance in this generation yet to like mm -hmm. really make it splash. Like this is it. Like this is the like you know this is the savior of the whole community here, and and they only get really one chance at it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's like you know you can't rebuild an esport. You know what I mean? And it builds from the beginning, and then it's you know it flourishes. And I think that the Halo Five community is already so strong that with the Halo Five community coming in, like it's gonna have such a great foundation already that mm -hmm. like. You know, having a launch event like this leading into, I don't know, who knows potentially what they already have planned. I'm, I'm just super excited that they're doing it immediately. Like, do, you, do the rest of the game developers, they, they, they watch the show, right? Are you guys yeah, actually right? listening? <laughs> it's not that hard to launch a competitive league with your game. Yeah. You don't have to wait an entire year to launch it and watch your game literally drown. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's it, it just blows my mind. Anyway. Um, I'm super excited about the event itself. Mm -hmm. I hope that, um, I know I saw the, the COVID regulations, so I'm really glad that they're kind of, you have to be fully vaccinated and you have to wear a mask the whole yep. time. And you have to bring your proof vaccination to even get in. So like, I saw uh, somebody on Twitter was uh, polling people about doing uh, custom masks with like your gamer tag on them. Yeah. So you could wear a mask so and have smash, a gamer tag what on the Smash it. guys are doing. And I was just like, that's that's genius. All the that's Smash casters, casters have that with their little name on that's it. That's awesome. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. Um, I really want to go. I do too. But I, it, I, I can't make it. But yeah, I, for me, it's just one of those things where it's like, okay, well, if you guys are letting general missions and VIPs in, then like, are you also extending invites to like press and partners? And if you are extending press and partners, then also like, are you also maybe letting I the, can make it? But are you also letting the press and the partners of all of the teams come? And you're inviting all those teams to. That, there's a lot of people going, mm -hmm. right? There's gonna be there a is. lot of people involved. So I just don't, I don't know. I don't know what the realistic version of us going is, but mm -hmm. I really would like to try to attend, as I think it's going to be a momentous event. Mm -hmm. I think it's gonna be incredible. I Monument think it really is. is in in not to uh, diss the the Halo Five competitive scene, but this really feels like Halo truly arriving in like the esports era. And let's be clear. Halo is one of the games that that built esports, right? When you look at the hallmark titles, uh, you look at CS 1.6, you look Star at StarCraft Brood War, um, hey, and I think Halo may be at a lower tier than those two, but I think Halo is is a pivotal title in terms of building esports through the 2000s, and it just feels like since esports has truly taken off with the advent of CS:GO, League of Legends, I guess we'll throw Fortnite in there, maybe. We don't have to. But when you look at the hallmark titles of the last decade that have truly built esports to what it is today, it feels like Halo has not been able to kind of get a piece of that pie and really show itself. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's kind of been just hybridating for the past decade. And now it feels like with Infinite coming out, with this first event, with the kind of hype around Halo right now, it feels like they're finally ready to step into this spotlight with these other huge titles and really start uh, to kind of do what Halo can do in the current esports scene. So. Yeah, I think that um, people are going to be surprised, like how boring battle royales are <laughs> when they start watching Halo. Yeah, because like I'm, I mean, I'm sorry, but like there is not a single battle royale that's like fun to watch. Like they're all bad. Mm -hmm. Like every single one has a terrible viewing experience from start <laughs> to finish, in comparison to the fast-paced awesome teamwork mm -hmm. of an arena shooter like arena shooters we stream halo 5 every sunday mm -hmm. bro it's just like ah! I, mean, I, <laughs> I think when like... you look at a battle royale too i feel like they just aren't the game the way the games work just generally i feel like it's not built great to a spectator experience there's yeah. too much going on there's too many teams to follow that you're always missing out on important stuff Whereas arena shooters, I feel like, are so perfectly built for spectators. And I, I agree when you look at just what we do on Sundays with the Halo 5 1K. Is like, I think it's an incredible viewing experience. And mm -hmm. I think it is only going to level up with what the team over at Halo and 343 are looking to put into Halo Infinite. So oh, yeah, I'm a big fan. I'm not, I'm not really a shooter gamer, mm -hmm. right? But like... I can respect Counter Strike and Valorant, mm -hmm. right? Super fun to watch. Great viewing experience. Takes a ton of skill to play the games. Yeah. Love arena shooters, right? Halo, so fast paced, like so cool to watch. Obviously, you know it had like Splitgate and Quake mm -hmm. that were holding people off, but Halo's the king and always yeah. will be. Um, and then you just got battle royales, which is a big cluster, and I don't even know where they came from, and I don't know why <laughs> they've been so popular. But I'm really glad that the battle royale genre is slowing down and mm -hmm. getting pushed underneath the rug. 
Um, I, of course, it'll always exist and whatnot, mm -hmm. but honestly, I think Halo could even have a space there. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that, you know, them creating their own battle royale within Halo Infinite could honestly have a lot of potential. Look, at, look what Call of Duty managed to pull off. Yeah. Like, Call of Duty's kind of in that same bucket where they're just a legacy, and then they managed to launch, you know, one of the most popular games almost of all time now, right? Yeah. Like, Warzone, and they managed to successfully run into the floor and put zero effort behind it. <laughs> um, but in all reality, right, like, you know, Microsoft has the ability to do that. We know mm -hmm. that they've been working nonstop on Infinite for five years something like that long time long time like yeah. they i think they got this in the bag so yeah. I'm, I'm 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 pretty excited i'm definitely putting a lot of I'm, i have pretty high expectations i would say mm -hmm. because i really think that they're going to knock it out of the park and i think that they have to at this state so yeah. let's go hcs i think it's very important next up let's talk a little more league of legends free agency news we talked about a north american player possibly going to eu let's talk about an eu player that could maybe come to NA, and especially I think you would like uh, them to come to a certain team. Uh, Reckless and G2 Esports are going to part ways uh, after only a year the team is holding tryouts uh, for an ADC replacement. Just looks like the relationship has broken down there. And my first thought here, and I hate that this happened because this is like the standard TSM fan thought process is like any big free agent comes up there immediately like, they're going to come to TSM. We're going to be crazy. <laughs> but I honestly feel like when you look at the TSM roster, and we had kind of a thorough discussion about this uh, a couple of times over a few episodes when we talked about, one, Bjergsen coming back, uh, and two, just with TSM's rough finish and what changes they would want to make, one of the spots we looked at was AD Carey. And when you look at this roster, whether Bjergsen comes back or not, if you keep Power of Evil mid yep. or if you put Bjergsen in there, both of them are going to be, uh, Bjergsen already is, and I think Power of Evil has now hit the point where he can be an NA resident, which opens up an import slot, which you need because you already have Sword Art at support. Huni, NA resident, you've got an NA jungler, resident mid. That means you can have an import bottom lane, which means that TSM could bring Reckless to North America. Now, who knows if it's gonna happen? Maybe Reckless wants to stay in EU. There's obviously a ton of things here, but I think TSM Reckless is not a crazy theory. Okay, but hear me out. Yes. Reckless comes to North America, joins, <laughs> Reckless. joins TSM. Yes. And we're crazy. No, I, I think that is... Think about it. A legitimate thing. <laughs> TSM like. fan thought process completed. <laughs> like, no, I mean, literally I, just repeats what I said <laughs> exactly. in about a single sentence. That's all. <laughs> okay, think about it. <laughs> We're crazy. Um, yeah. No, I, I mean, I, I think that could. I mean, we talked about it last week. Like you said the AD carry slot being kind of available with our mm -hmm. god tier support already. It's, um, it could line up pretty nicely. Mm -hmm. I think that. Um, I thought it was. I was super surprised when I saw the announcement because I thought he was going to Worlds with G two. But then, As of like course, a, G2 didn't qualify. Yeah, but yeah. then I was like... You're like, wait a second. <laughs> oh, wait. So then I was like, okay, that's kind of savage. He was like, I'm out of here, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, so, I mean, I'm all about it. I think it would uh, definitely be an upgrade for TSM. I 100%. think that I would love to see that roster, either with Power of Evil or Bjergsen in mid, um, take a swing at next, next split and just kind of see how that... Um, if that was really the missing piece, right? Because it felt like that was kind of the missing piece at this last split, and now it's like, you know, if we have a chance to test the theory, then I'm all about it. Because I don't think I, uh, I don't think I've, I've given up on the current roster. Right? Mm -hmm. I think the current roster does have what it takes to get there and to like kind of push that ceiling. So, yeah. also, yeah. I don't even know why this popped into my head, but it literally just did. Did you see the the freaking Olivia May video? Oh, Avali May, yeah. the the world's uh, yeah. like the industry baby so, remix. The, the, so I didn't the watch the whole Liquid thing, one or whatever. But yeah. I saw this screenshot of her and Raz. Yes, <laughs> I'm just like, bro, oh my it girl. is actually hilarious, super funny. They're yeah. they're just they make such great content. Like Avali is, you know, it's she, not she's hilarious. A lot of her content doesn't scratch like the itch for me, but I know she is incredibly popular in the scene. Yeah. Her content is crazy. Uh, crazy popular with people. They they love her, and I you know while dude, it's maybe high buy, I don't necessarily memes, like dude. it. Oh yeah, no high quality memes. That's that's I all understand why that like, are backed by Riot. High mm -hmm. quality backed by Riot memes. I'm sold. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I don't even care what it's about. I'm yeah. just like, I'm in there, dude. Yeah, watch that. Also watch, did you see the uh, the video for the new World song? Oh, Burn my Burn It gosh. All Down. What did you yes. think? It was, that was crazy. It was awesome. That was a super crazy. But those guys are, no wonder they're making a, uh, I was making a joke. I was like, no wonder they're making a damn TV show. Right. They're like, guys, we can't just make one of these a year. We're bored. Let us do something else. You I know thought, what I mean? Like, <laughs> I thought it was so perfect. And obviously, every year, uh, if you guys follow at Fionn on Fire, who is uh, one of the main reporters behind Upcomer, Every year, he's always on this, like, tirade on Twitter every September about when's the world song coming out, where is it, we want it now. And I thought it was funny that he was on his same bullshit this year, which, I mean, I completely the sport because I'm like, give me the new world song, I want it too. But then we find out as it drops that he actually had all the insider info the whole time. He had an exclusive interview with, like, the griefing. creative director behind He was behind griefing, it. Yeah. He had already seen the video and stuff. And I was like, this traitor, dude, he knew the whole time. But uh, I thought it was... I thought it was incredible. The animation. Ugh. Oh, my God. That fight with uh, Chovy and Showmaker was so sick. And he tweeted about it, too. He's like, I don't care about the rest of the video. Just that 30 seconds of, like, Showmaker and Chovy doing doing their little anime battle was tight. And I agree. I thought it was awesome. The song is uh, a banger. super sick. It's yeah. one of my favorites. I want to play it in... Um, Beat Saber, so bad. Ooh. Please give it to me. <laughs> I'm ready. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Get the VR set up in here real soon. But, uh, yeah, I mean, hats off to Ryan, especially because uh, I, I read the article. They've been working on this since uh, February. Mm. So, like, like, there were it. a lot of people that were asking questions because, you know, typically a lot of the players that are featured in the video are players that are going to be at Worlds. And, for example, Showmaker is going to be there, but they were like, why is Reckless in here? And it's because the animation, there was so much work put into it that they had to just decide, uh, I think it was back in like May yep, or they June, had to guess. they had to just say, we think these are going to be the players there because then we're going to put them in the video. And that's just how it worked, personally. Cool. I don't care that players that are in the world are home. This is, this, is, this is he's sitting at home like this. <laughs> yeah. Just like, I'm in the video. I'm pretty so, much there, right? Yeah, like, right. he so, got all the benefits of going to Worlds without yeah, going to Worlds. It was sick. If you haven't seen it, uh, look up Burn It All Down uh, on YouTube. It's it's an awesome video. Tell us what you think. Uh, and tell us where it ranks on your all-time uh, world song list. Is it top three for you? I was going to say three. It's three? Okay. I think. I think it is... I think it's number two. I actually really loved last year's. I think I feel like I'm only I'm like the only one who likes Takeover from last year like the most. I, yeah. Almost everybody is like Rise is the best. Rise. Like, I think Rise is sick, but Rise is not my favorite. Rise is a really good one. Yeah, Rise is. I'd awesome. have to. I feel like I have to. I don't know the names of all. My of them. top three in some order would be Rise, Takeover from last year, and then Burn It All Down because I think they're all sick. But. I don't know, dude. Burn It All Down might be my favorite. It was awesome. That one was legendary. Uh, so, let's talk about Smash, but not Smash. Oh. Uh, let's talk about SpongeBob in Smash. Okay. Uh, Nickelodeon All-Star Brawl comes out. Uh, at the time you're listening to it, it's probably already out for us. It comes out tomorrow. Um, We're playing it right now on stream, live. Yes, we are, actually. So, if you're watching this in the future, go back in time. <laughs> go to twitch.tv yeah. slash esports arena and, and watch, watch the, the VOD. Stream. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, what are your thoughts? I mean, people are going to say Smash Clone. It is a Smash Clone. A yeah. Smash Clone. Of course it is. Um, yeah. But what, there's been a ton of footage coming out. They've been releasing um, move sets and videos for all of the new characters coming in. I think the latest ones we've seen are multiple characters from Avatar. We got Aang. Uh, Korra and Toph, which yeah. is, is really cool. I'm a big uh, Avatar fan. Um, obviously, you're, you've are you been a Smash player for a long time. What are your thoughts on the game, just on what you've seen? Um, well, first of all, I don't necessarily think there's ever anything wrong with cloning a game. Right? Like, no, especially obviously because... Obviously, you have to clone games to... Pre- uh, to advance the gaming universe. I mean, right? the like, entire shooter genre was born from Doom. Yeah, there you right? go. That's why mm-hmm. shooters for a long time were just called Doom clones yeah. until... We but also, like, a bit. take a look at, like, um, we'll take, like, Fortnite, for example, right? Mm-hmm. Fortnite comes out, and then you start seeing these clones come out of Fortnite, mm-hmm. right? But then Fortnite, you start seeing Fortnite adapt their, I don't know why I said it like this, PUBG, battle, you know what I mean? All the, yeah. the different Battle Royale genre. New Battle Royales come out. The old Battle Royales adapt to the new Battle Royale, yeah. right? So take a look at, like, Apex comes out. You can now res people. Now you can res people in Fortnite. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Stuff like that, right? So I think it's, I think it's okay cloning games. With the assumption that you're trying to make something new and progress the trying scene. Trying to iterate on the form. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. just like New World. New World is a copy of WoW. Yeah. But, you know, not the point. So I think it's fine when you when you duplicate a game. 
you know, as long as there's some some solid like progression. The mm -hmm. thing about Nickelodeon All Stars Brawl is one great great online netcode, right? So you can I've play online, that. and I think that's a that's a very very. You want to know why too? Because I mean, I'm pretty sure it was initially supposed to be like a web browser game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it makes sense. It's like built to be played online, netcode, right? Yeah. Um, the character, obviously, their character roster is just as powerful as Super Smash Brothers. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I'm, I guess that's a that's a harsh term when you're talking globally. Mario, yes, to Danny I would say Phantom, but in I'm talking, North America, yeah. and in the United States, yes. I'm talking globally, IP you're wise. Battle, yes, IP wise, they have a lot of weight. Nickelodeon mm -hmm. is huge. They have Ninja Turtles. That's up there for sure. Danny Phantom is super popular. Uh, Rugrats is our, you know, that that goes a really long way. Um, I love that they went back to the wild thornberries. They got well, yeah, Nigel you know, Thornberry in there, dude. Let's with go. The, it has a Jigglypuff rest. Um, <laughs> yeah, swear to God, dude. Uh, obviously, Avatar, another global IP, right? Yes. So it's like they, they have they have great IPs. Mm -hmm. They cloned it from Smash. They have the general flow down, and they have great net code, right? Yes. And honestly, the game looks super cool. It's super quirky and fun and mm -hmm. all that kind of jazz. So I think there's a lot of potential. I haven't got to get my hands on it, but from what I've seen from the pro-ish side of Smash... They like how it feels, which mm -hmm. is a really important component because it's hard to recreate the Smash feel. Mm -hmm. I played a lot of Smash clones. It's very difficult to recreate the Smash experience, yeah. right? Um, and I think they might have been able to pull that off. So I'm excited to get my hands on it to kind of, I guess, dive into it a little bit more as we already have it up and running here. But um, overall, I, I honestly just want to have some fun with it. Um, I think that it will, the success of the game. Honestly, it probably depends on like how often, how much they can push out content, right? I think that the community, the Smash community, and the fighting game community will probably scoop it up and integrate it into like the tournament scene pretty quick by mm -hmm. themselves. So I don't think that Nickelodeon has to try too much. I think if they if they can like they just passively, have to stay out of the way. If they but if they can like. passively stay out of the way, I agree with. But if they can passively provide support, yeah. right? Like help um, help these guys, these um, like VGBC type people get game codes, right? Like stuff like that. that just it's like, literally just don't like, you just have to not be Nintendo. Yeah, don't body yourself. Okay, don't body yourself. Because that's what Nintendo sure. just like always likes to just shoot themselves in the foot in any way with the competitive scenes. And it's just like, you know, and I feel like already a huge step when you talk about the netcode, because my first thought when you say it has good netcode, I'm like, haha, unlike Smash. <laughs> because everybody always yeah. is bodying Smash for how terrible their netcode and their online experience is, and which is why Smash struggled so much during COVID, because people were like, this game's terrible to play online. But if you have a game like Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl coming out, and you're like, hey, this is fine to play online. Like, if we yeah. don't have lands, that's okay. And I think that's an incredible first step for the game. I totally agree. And so I'm, you know, I'm excited to see as more uh, information and discovery happens in the game, kind of just how everybody feels about it. But overall, I think it, you know, the, the success of the game will focus a lot around um, Nintendo's content plans. Yeah. And I think that they have such a opportunity to expand on mm -hmm. their current roster, on maybe the maps, the, the music, the, um, you know, maybe hosting an event every once in a while. Because that's the thing is like they can host two events a year. That's all they need to do. One event a year. Yeah. You know what I mean? They don't need to do anything because again, the fighting game community will pick it up and carry yeah. it. If you made a good game, as long as it. long as you give people the stuff to look forward to, are yeah. are are interacting with your community, like they could build and foster a really really cool space, and honestly, give Smash a run for their money in the sense of producing another top tier platform fighter. Yeah. Like there isn't. There's there's other ones like yeah, like Brawlhalla and like what stuff like that that like kind of exists in the space. Rivals of Aether. Yeah. You know, it all it all kind of exists in the space, right? But it will it can't get to Smash's level because there's not enough IP support around sure. it. There's not enough, um, there's no game developer support, obviously, that matters because they don't have enough to be able to support it in that way. And it, it just feels like there's a huge opportunity for it because you kind of, when you talk about the other titles in the space, the Brawlhalla's, the Rivals of Aether, they're very much like a few tiers below Smash. Mm -hmm. And it feels like the opportunity is very much there that while you aren't necessarily going to unseat Smash, you can establish yourself as that clear cut number two in a very short amount of time. If you and I'm, I'll be honest, being a number realistic. two when you're talking about um, League and Dota, when you're talking about CSGO and Valorant, when exactly. you're talking about like being number two sounds awesome. Yeah. So like sliding in there, I think they have a good opportunity to do it. Uh, and I'm excited to play as soon as we stop talking here. Yeah. SpongeBob I won't keep him You guys are such <laughs> memers, bro. I saw the other one too. What was it? Lonely Lands. I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I will take credit for uh, writing all those lower thirds. I love it. If you're listening on the audio only part, you have no idea what we're talking about. Maybe, <laughs> uh, maybe check out the YouTube VOD. You will know. Uh, next up, Netflix makes their first 
game studio acquisition. Uh, they picked up the developer of Oxenfree Night School Studio. I know there's been a lot of talk over the last like year or two about Netflix wanting to push into the space of streamed games. Obviously, there was like Google Stadia that came out, and that was a thing. <laughs> um, I mean, when I look at Netflix, look, I'm I'm still very wary of streaming games like that. Um, I don't know that we're at a place where it's going to be really good yet, but I mean, if there's a company to jump in on it and uh, take some of those big uh, early steps in the space, Netflix is not a bad one. Um, it's definitely not Google. It's de- <laughs> And that's the weird thing too, is like you look at Google and you think, I, I, initially I would be like, damn, like I think Google could do a sick job at that. And I don't really feel like they did. So, you know, maybe we America's, just don't have the infrastructure yet for this kind of thing. America's infrastructure just isn't built for it. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, dude, if Google can't do it, then who can even almost get there? Like the, the amount of the amount of like physical infrastructure required to pull off what all these guys are spouting is yeah. ludicrous. Yeah. We're talking like decades of of infrastructure support need or like um, maintenance that would be needed. Like, yeah. They're just like streaming. Yeah, sure, but you need to have like hub houses like everywhere, and like we're still getting. I'm still getting throttled internet after 6 p.m. from Cox. You know what I mean? Like, not not actually me because my internet's fantastic. So I was just talking. But in general, like yeah. most people, people still deal with that. Are still getting sure. annihilated by just normal ISPs. Like there is no way that we are going to successfully str- have a game streaming platform that works well that costs even a reasonable amount of money anytime mm-hmm. soon. That's a good gaming experience. It's gonna be tough. I have I have zero you know, faith, and I'm gonna leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. I you know I would like for it to work well, but I think uh, they're going to have to very much like prove themselves to me before I'm ever buying in on anything like that. So uh, we'll see. I don't know. I just got I, I just got my first Switch, so I'm like hyped about that. So congratulations. But yeah, Netflix. They got a game studio. We'll see where that goes. Um, <laughs> last couple topics we want to talk about here. Uh, another lower third that I'm proud of uh, as TSM FTX uh, has released an <laughs> NFT collection. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, again, if you're on the audio only version, we have little lower thirds that, uh, on the video version of the podcast that just highlight what topic are we talking about. And I always try to do a unique, kind of catchy, whatever title at the bottom. And for talking about TSM dropping NFTs, the lower third is TSM FTX NFT XYZ. Because I was just like, there's too many <laughs> fucking letters here. That's that's crazy. I, I saw this and I actually think it's super cool and it makes a lot of sense of what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, uh-huh. but let's just talk about yeah, the lower yeah, third. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm not surprised, right? It was only a matter of time. We've discussed this TFM, uh, TSM, too many fucking letters. We talked about the TSM FTX deal story multiple times on the show so far. Um, obviously, it's a huge opportunity for them. It's a huge opportunity for FTX to get access to uh, a huge market uh, of fans. Uh, it was only a matter of time before they were doing uh, unique NFTs. And you can go get them now. Uh, they're doing an auction. I guess it's going to be for charity, which I think is cool. I mean, mm-hmm. using it for uh, you know a, a positive cause, I think, is great than just, you know, needing more than the $210 million you're already getting. Um, so I think that's great. And uh, how long until you're getting a TSM NFT? Well, I'm probably not going to bid on it because they're going <laughs> to they're gonna be psycho. But yeah. um, overall, I think it's, I mean, I think it's great. Obviously, like if you guys who are, aren't super big crypto people, right? NFTs are essentially um, like owning digital art, right? You're just basically yeah. bidding on a digital art piece. I believe they're like little chibi versions of like the different players and mm-hmm. stuff that you can purchase. So they're super cute or whatever. Um, and uh, I'm glad they're doing you know cool stuff for charity like that. I think it makes a lot of sense. Their inclusion with FTX, which is of course not only their biggest um, partner, title, yeah. uh, title sponsor, but mm-hmm. also of course is a uh, app where you can purchase cryptocurrency, NFTs, trading, things like that, right? So it all makes sense. It's another step just kind of into that crypto space for TSM. Um, and I'm sure that we'll see a lot more like this. And I um, I hope they go over well. I think it's a really cool uh, concept. Um, and, you know, having a, like a signed 
digital chibi version of my favorite streamer yeah. that I bought for like you know 150 bucks for charity or something like that. Like I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. You know what I mean? I don't I don't really see any downsides to it, and I think that they should totally rep that kind of stuff. And I mean, when you look at specifically TSM being uh, you know an esports gaming org, uh, there's going to be incredible opportunities in the future to create unique pieces like that as NFTs and and sell them. So uh, I think this is just the first of many NFTs we're going to see from TSM and I hope they do some really cool unique stuff. I will say I saw the the ones that they're doing right now. I think they're pretty cool. I'm not an NFT guy, so I'm not going to be getting any anytime soon unless I see an opportunity for one of those is like, "Oh, hey, you can get one for a few bucks and they're skyrocketing in price." I'm like, "I may be in on that, but uh I do, I, I like it, and I'm not surprised. It was only a matter of time. So TSM getting into the NFT XYZ PDQ game. Uh, last topic of the day, New World has been huge hmm. uh, over the last week. We talked about it on last week's episode, especially in regards to WoW seemingly dying out. I used strong quotations around that. but I'll use weak ones. <laughs> uh, a lot of discussion, a lot of play around New World this week, and an interesting quote we got from uh, Shroud, if you don't know Shroud, Wake former up. professional. <laughs> honestly, yes. If you're listening to this podcast, you don't know who Shroud is. What are you doing? How did uh, you find us if you don't know who he is? <laughs> former CSGO pro, uh, now turned full-time streamer, uh, one of the biggest streamers in the world. He's up there with the Docs, the Tim the Tatmans, and et cetera. And talking about New World this week, he said, and I quote, for those that just don't have the time, I would just say stay away from the game. If you don't have the time, just don't play. If you can only play this game for an hour a day, I don't think you'll ever make it to the end. And his push was really around the, you know, all the grinders are gonna just pass you like crazy. When new content comes out, you're always gonna be behind and he just doesn't feel like New World is a title that is gonna be good for any sort of casual player. Uh, what are your kind of thoughts on that? Um, so I've probably logged about, um, I don't know, 30 hours yeah. into New World. So like a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm, I'm probably about halfway through the game, level 30-ish, if that counts. It's, I know it's less than half. Okay, yeah. don't, don't break out your freaking calculators. Um, but, you know, the, the game is inherently fun yes. when it comes to, um, you know, an MMO, right? It's a standard MMO, it's like what you would expect. Right? You, go, you load in, you're a fresh character, and you, you, know, you level up, you pick your different abilities, you build your character. Um, full, pretty much full-blown carbon copy of WoW um, with, you know, its own tiny little differences or whatever that we don't need to get into but you know when it comes to like casual playing and this and that i don't know if i necessarily like fully agree with what shroud's saying to be honest i, I do think that if your intent is to start the game you make it to end game content and play and as an end game like you know hit level 60 yeah. get max raid gear raid twice a week with your guild and pvp at a super high level yeah you can't do that playing an hour a day mm -hmm. you can't do that in any mmo playing an hour a day even i mean maybe wow because wow is free but um no, i was kidding but no honestly you probably can't do that in any mmo right mm -hmm. because you know this, this game takes like an hour just to run somewhere but um you, you, you do need to put a lot of time into the game i think that it's fine if you play less but you have to have less expectations yeah. right like you, you can totally have fun playing the game um, at not max level. And you have plenty of other stuff you can do. You can go through the story, you can do all these different dungeons and, and different experiences. You can get up all your different, um, like your crafting and, and your different, um, your traits and all that kind of jazz. So there's a, there's a ton of stuff to do in the game, um, which does make it very difficult if you don't have a lot of time to sync. But again, it's like you're talking to Shroud, who's like trying to like achievement hunt and hit max level as fast as possible so he can like try to, you know, break records and do this and that and all these different things. Yeah. And that's not everyone's intent with the game. So I do believe that it is a much more difficult game than WoW in the sense of it's not built for casuals. Yes. But I definitely think that casuals... So you casuals, would say it is, like, less friendly to casuals yes. of an MMO. Okay. I, I, would, I would say it's less... I mean, but to be fair, WoW is, like... Which is, like, partially to Shroud's point, but you wouldn't go so far as saying, but if it's you're like, casual, uh, don't play the game. It, well, it's complicated, right? Because you, you, if, if you told me I'm, I want to start playing an MMO, I wouldn't tell you to go play Classic WoW. Okay. Right, because Classic WoW is a very difficult MMO that doesn't have any quality of life, mm -hmm. right? Because it's the, one of the original, right? It's like there's no quality of life components of it. New World is like Classic WoW with quality of life, okay. right? Where it's like, you still have to run everywhere, things take a really long time, you gotta do all these different things, right? But at the same time, it's like, it's updated into the new, in, into the new world, got it. Uh, it's updated though in comparison to something like Vanilla WoW. Sure. So like, Vanilla WoW is way less friendly than New World is. Mm -hmm. So I think there's still like a tier structure there where like commercial WoW, today's WoW, a monkey could 
jump on that. I'm serious. There's some pretty smart monkeys. Monkey could literally jump on there and honestly probably figure it out. Okay. Because it is so babied. And that's what's ruined the game. It's completely thrashed the game to the point where you don't have to do anything. Like, everything is done for you. Everything is super, super easy. Everything is too easy almost to the point, right? Mm -hmm. Where you want to do, like, the hardest raid in the whole game. You click one button. It automatically queues you in with, like, 40 people. And the bosses can't kill you. And you're like... Oh wow! Look, I did it, mom. I got it. You know, so it's like uh, I'm about to go be the sickest WoW player. You literally can. That's the thing. It's like you can beat the final boss like with no, with nothing, no recourse there. Mm -hmm. Like in that sense. So, um, you know, I, I guess that's, there's a little bit of a there's a lot of information there, but I think I'd boil it down to the fact that it's like, yeah, sure, it's 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 a less casual, friendly MMO than World of Warcraft retail version is. Yeah. Uh, but you absolutely don't have to. You know, I definitely wouldn't tell you not to play the game if you can only play an hour a day. The important thing you're saying is adjust your expectations based on the time you're going to commit to it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, it's like playing like a, um, it's like playing. I mean, it's like playing uh, any dark, game, dark, right? What's that? So Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Dark Souls. It's like playing Dark Souls, but you only play an hour a day. Maybe it takes you two years to beat the game. Yeah. But like, you, you can still beat the game. Yeah. You can't be mad if you didn't beat it in a week if you're only putting in that amount of time. Yeah, it's a really big world. But mm -hmm. I, again, I also don't think that like who cares if someone's passing you in like level and stuff. Like I don't, I don't really see what he's what he means. Like there doesn't really seem to be any reference point. Mm -hmm. It's like as long as you are enjoying the game. Yeah. Like you don't have to play with anybody else because the content's built to your level, not to theirs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's all I would say. Overall, I think it's been fine. I would recommend picking it up if you guys are looking for an MMO to play, looking for some time to burn. Uh, but I also, at the same time, like, it probably won't be very and popular. And you've really enjoyed it so far? Um, I would say that I have not enjoyed um, a lot of aspects of the game. Okay. But I think that now that I've hit, like, um, like once I hit around, like, level 25-ish, and I started, like, doing, like, more of, like, the group content and stuff like that, I started to actually uh, understand what, what was fun about the game. I feel like I had a, I, I didn't really enjoy the, the early leveling. Okay. I think the UI, again, I'm a WoW player, so I think the UI is a little lackluster when it comes to, like, specific things. Little, little nitty-gritty things, right? I'm pretty picky. Well, and so. you can... All the hours you put in a wow you kind of have the experience to be able to pick apart that little stuff so yeah one of the things i did say when i originally started leveling was this that i would not have been able to do it this quickly if i wasn't a veteran wow player but again it's like that's not i mean if you're a casual player looking for your first mmo like i would much rather you play new world than wow nowadays sure because like in new world you at least get the full experience and it's pretty cool and it looks really nice and there's like a lot of different things you can do wow it's just a disaster don't download that game we're here to we like like trashing on a lot of things on this podcast one of them is wow luke will Dude, be well, happy to buy i'm allowed wow. to trash on wow because of how many hours i have oh in for wow. sure oh i'm not complaining you know what i mean i'm, I'm no, I, know, I, know. I don't i don't like wow but that's for different reasons that's because i just don't like mmos yeah. so that was like a pretty it. long rant about new world but overall like you know I, I i think it's all right if you like mmos try it out yeah all right what have you been playing this week new world new world that's, That's it. it. I have no time for anything else. <laughs> Actually, you know, I'm playing... Um, I mean, if you put in 30 hours, that is I did, a I've, significant I, amount of time. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty much all of my free time. Yeah. I don't have that much, but that's <laughs> that. I mean, 30 hours of free time in a week is not bad. You know though. what? He did have enough time to pull a Rayquaza VMAX alt art on stream last week. If you missed it, go watch the VOD. It was crazy. Woo! It was crazy. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm super <laughs> excited about it. Uh, I was, I was I th I've been saying it all the week. It's been, I can't believe I pulled Rayquaza. That was crazy. I walk. I come into the office today. Luke. Luke's walking down. I'm like, Luke. You. You know who I just realized you look like. And he turns around, just all serious. He's like, Who? I'm like, A guy, who just pulled a Rayquaza Max all time. He's like, Let's go. <laughs> he was all hyped. So that was uh, that was super sick. So a lot of new world, and that's really kind of mostly it the last week. Um, and I, I was I was playing Hearthstone Battlegrounds a lot. I was talking about last oh, week. Yeah, yeah. Kind of fell off that train a little bit. Didn't they nerf your strat? They nerfed my strat, and I hate it now. And I'm <laughs> trash. So I'm I'm, I'm moving <laughs> goodbye, on. Goodbye, top two. Yeah, goodbye, top two hundred <laughs> dreams. And I've been playing some Yu Gi Oh. I'm a big oh, Yu-Gi-Oh okay. guy, so I'm always I'm always looking for something to do casually while I'm just kind of like chilling. Mm -hmm. um, so card games are usually my go-to. So there's a Switch Yu-Gi-Oh game um, that I've been playing. I don't remember exactly what it's called. I think it's called like Link Evolution or some crap. Who cares? Mm -hmm. But it's actually a really cool game. Like they have the entire story of every single um, show. So Yu-Gi-Oh, Yu-Gi-Oh GX, Yu-Gi-Oh 5D, Yu-Gi-Oh Zexel. You can, you get to play through the entire story. And you can play, um, and you play every single duel through the, throughout the entire story. And you get to like, you know, there's little character interactions, and you can actually even. So you, I can just beat the hell out of Joey's dumbass decks. Yeah, and the best part is like you can either play like who it'll always default to let you play whoever wins the duel in the show. Yeah. But you can play the other deck if you want. You can just swap sides. I mean, can we talk about how like if you actually pay attention to the decks that Joey runs early in the show, like how actually legitimately terrible 
they are is literally like best card is like baby dragon dude it's just like what do you mean it's a trash card you say that but i'm pulling off some time wizard dude i'm literally like no yeah 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 dude I'm, I'm up against like the most un it's so it's so bs bro you have like no chance because they give you like the worst decks and i'm yeah. all joey i'm all time wizard coin flip nailed it destroy their whole board polymerization fuse thousand dragon in i start railing them with thousand dragon oh i'm God. insane at Yu-Gi-Oh, so it's fine for me but i totally agree it's a rough sometimes so but yeah mostly just um, mostly has been new world for sure so that's, okay. that's been a good time how about you uh i've been going back and playing breath of the wild oh cool and i it's it it's kind of makes me sad because first of all breath of the wild and i never played zelda games prior right i had played a little bit of like link to the past i used to have an emulator of it on my pc a few years ago so i had played some of that but other than that I had really not played any Zelda titles growing up. I didn't really weird. have Nintendo. I played. I had a Wii, but I never played a Zelda title on Wii. Ah, dude, the Wii one was the best. So that was a what Skyward Sword. I don't and, remember. <laughs> but I don't know. So like, I never played any Zelda titles. It was awesome, and then uh, when Breath of the Wild came out, my roommate was like all over me to play it. And then especially it was like an open world game, and I was like, I don't like open world games. I've tried open world games. I hate them. I can never get into Fallout. All this stuff. I got so bored. But he finally convinced me to play it. And now Breath of the Wild is one of my favorite games of all time. It's incredible. Uh, the exploration is awesome. The whole world is so much fun. The combat oh, you got feels God, so good. dude. Oh, I did, honestly. And it's just, but it's also a bummer. And again, I played it for the first time a few years ago. So I'm going back and replaying it now. And the only thing that bums me out is I wish that I could just wipe my brain of my entire experience with Breath of the Wild and play it again fresh because it's fun still playing it again. But I will never be able to recapture that like first experience of coming out on the Great Plateau and walking and exploring and like going into Bro, the mountains and stuff. It don't is, worry, there's like oh. ten other games that you haven't played yet that are all arguably just as good. We'll see, and I'm probably gonna have to do that at some point. There's some uh, really I'm good dying ones. For Breath there's some of the really Wild. good ones. I'm dying for Breath of the Wild too. I'm telling you, dude, you gotta go back. Like there's some really good ones, even maybe not the very very OG ones, right? Yeah. But there's like some there's some good ones that you can that you can nab that still have like really high quality. He's graphics. trying to get me to play uh, the Wind Waker HD yeah. remake. Yeah, that's so, a really good one too. When uh, the, that's that the to remake of the PlayStation. 2. That one was on GameCube. Wind Waker was on GameCube. Same one. Same. Oh, play. They had it on PlayStation. I'm pretty sure. Hmm, I'm, interesting. Wait, maybe it was PlayStation Three it's, though. It's a Nintendo title. Why would it be on? Am I being crazy? I might be being crazy. I'm being crazy. I'm trying to think of... Uh, I don't think they've released Zelda titles yeah, on no, other consoles. I think I'm, it must just be my Wii. But it was definitely GameCube. I so I had, sure. all, I had every console growing up so hard okay. for my brain. Me and my friends. But this, we, we, this guy, he's so cool. No, no, don't worry. It wasn't, it was, <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm so rich. No, 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 it was me, me and all my friends, what we would do is we would like each ask our parents for a different thing. So oh, we, so each when get a different we, console when we fused the together, we had everything because yeah, we all hung out together. They had the strat. We had dude. we had really good strats. When okay, we, were we like spread it out. Louis we were like, okay, if we're budgeting all of our parents what they're yeah. gonna get us for Christmas and this. If we if we wait this long, we can get all these. I remember that when, was me when I was a kid. <laughs> I remember when because uh, Cameron and I grew up. Uh, you, you guys don't know Cameron, but he used to work here. Uh, we grew up on the same street together. He moved in when we were ten, and I remember when he got Guitar Hero two, and I remember. I couldn't get my parents to get it for me, so I remember one night trying to convince him, like, let me borrow it for the night because I wanted to play so bad that I, like, lobbied him for, like, an hour and he wouldn't do it, and I was so mad. So, love you, Cameron. You didn't have to let me borrow it. I was definitely being a little a little shit, but, uh, yeah. So, I'll have to go back and play some other Zelda games, yeah. but Breath of the Wild, incredible, incredible. That first, like, scene walking out of the Shrine of Resurrection, and it just pans out, and you see all the mountains and everything just oh gets me every time so that's been a blast uh that's what we've been playing this last week that's what's been going on in esports and gaming over the last week so that's it for episode eight we're quickly uh coming up on episode 10 which is super exciting i'm looking forward to that uh luke always a pleasure my man we'll do it again next week hope you had fun yep always we'll be here um Series E starts next week. I'm excited. Yeah. See Series you guys E qualifiers coming up. Check us out on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. Just search Eat, Speak, Compete. Follow us on all of our socials. We're at Esports Arena. We'll see you guys around. Have a great week. Enjoy playing New World. And uh, let us know who your main is in Nickelodeon All-Stars Brawl. It's Danny Phantom. Later. <laughs>